Uh, Quick flex. Let, let, let me just say that the as of right commercial is 2FAR, and for some community facility uses, it's 6.5 FAR. Okay. Um, I'll get straight to. Um, I, th I think one key point is on the neighborhood context as well, and it does affect the massing. So we're, we're really doing a mathematical study. If 5.5 FAR is the minimum hardship, uh, enough minimum level to overcome the hardship, how do you bulk and mass 5.5? One thing, since we're working with even the last administration to the current one in city planning, we wanted to keep the context, and this is one thing that was very important to how to run the community board, was the Vernon Boulevard context of an R6. So at least the setbacks and the street wall of the, um, basically the usage and also the, the bulk and massing of Vernon Boulevard would be in context. So that, that's important for what we're going to move to uh, next. So this is a 6.5, uh, which would be laid out uh, at an assemblage of the sites. And uh, what you're noticing on the red X is there's no public access to the water park. So if you wanted to reduce the heights to 225 and just mass the full 6.5, this is what it would be. Um, what we did is we'll move down to 5.5 because that is the minimum uh, amount required to overcome the hardship. And this is basically a bulk and massing that would be permissible. Um, but what we wanted to do was to also comply with waterfront zoning. Uh, we have some requirements we needed to meet, but instead of just a 15 to 16 foot uh, space, we're actually expanding it to 70 for a public access all the way to the waterfront, and the park that is allowed in the back is actually double the size required, uh, necessary. So what we're doing is we're moving some of that bulk. Uh, the next move you can see is taking, we're remaining the Paragon Paint building. It's not going to be uh, torn down. It's going to be renovated and become part of the retail usage. And then this move right here is really to keep the context of Vernon Boulevard. We did a lot of view studies with the community board. And actually, it was great. Last time we were here, to be honest with you, you we had not met the community board because they wanted to postpone in six months. And I think because of your help, we actually went back and ownership and everybody went to several meetings. We had a public meeting, we had a land use meeting, we went back to the community board. And actually, the response was pretty positive, uh, especially on the water park. And I think some of the moves that were being made to address some of the concerns now, of course, the uh, land use committee didn't even vote, but you know the community board vote. I believe we had four uh, people who approved it. But we had numerous people who came in from other groups who want to walk their kids, from people who uh, wanted to work on the retail. There was a lot of response that we actually did, and I think this move. Um, the other thing is we're moving 50 feet back from Vernon on the big bill. So a 28-foot tower is basically a massing that comes from protecting the Vernon context, opening up a waterfront park that's twice the size and has an access point and keeping the other buildings along the street wall, which is really the experience that people will have walking uh, to that level. Um, that's the context of the street. And then um, for orientation and for, uh, for also the distance between buildings that's required, we do a, a corner orientation. And that's actually within the, even the M1 force tax exposure plan. So with city planning, we, we said, we will stay under 300 feet. We will stay within the sky exposure plan that is in the underlying zoning. This is what would be allowed in the context of an underlying zoning of an M14 with the sky exposure plan, given the bulk and mass allowed there. So that's the study that we've been working on for several years with city planning. And and while you're on that slide, could you point out where the RFP sites are? Yeah, so the RFP site is just literally yeah, from here. Uh, these sites right here. That's the waterfront site. So just right across the basin and uh, there's the other site which has actually gone through ULERP in the past that's being addressed right now, which is actually an R7 and an R9 that has an FAR that's much greater as well. So, and you know, the rest of the properties are Plaxal properties. But, but uh, there's there's but actually the, the, the pop the over there, sidewalk repair, the in the DOT side. side. Yep. To the right left, there. a little bit more to the left. Yeah, right. That, yeah. that yeah. block there is uh, one that's allowed it. 350 to 500. Right. This is part of the RFP right here. Right. That's one RFP and then the other side of the street to the So right. This will be up to, you know, 450 feet high. 350, 350 to, 500. to 500. And across the street on the water, that can go up 450 to 650. That's what city planning has to be. To be very open, we'll I think, you know, both DSA and city planning did approach us a number of times. They said, you know, why not go through ULARP or why not participate in whatever's going to happen? And I mean, this is, even as Penny has stated, this is the one project that actually has a hardship that needs to be addressed by DSA and move forward. And ownership uh, said, we will take less to move forward because we want to address this. You know, one of the other community comments. 
Uh, just real briefly, the community board said this our project will be a terrible precedent for the area before this before the RFP came out. And we kept saying, no, this will be a good precedent because it's going to set the height pretty low, actually. And it's going to set the FAR relatively low. And it turns out that under the RFP, it's the bottom of the FAR range, with five and a half, and 295 is substantially less than the lower height that's proposed in the RFP. So we were right. <laughs> I just want to take some credit. So why do you think the community, well, why do you think? Actually, one, I think one important thing was, and I actually I mean, go to a lot of community boards and I do understand this point, I think they felt a little overwhelmed. I think that they are concerned of spot zoning. I think they're a smart board. They're very smart. They're not overwhelmed easily. No, I th well, there's a lot of misinformation. It was really important to clarify from uh, flood protection to understanding what the zoning compliance is. But I think that their interest was, can, can this project wait till we understand the macro studies being done by the city before we spot zone and set a precedent that everyone will come and ask for a variance and not go into a macro planning. But the city is actually studying uh, areas that are not on the waterfront, and the RFP gives the indication what the city wants to do and has even told us if you sit and wait, you could probably get more. So I think that Pat understands, the community board understands that we have voluntarily gone over the needs that are requested for the BSA. It's extremely high standard at BSA. It's not going to be that everybody comes with a variance because of the pollution. And that the other issues are being addressed. I think also the infrastructure questions are very important to them. Where are schools going to come from? Uh, how are we handling some of the larger infrastructure issues? Those are being addressed uh, the in RFP, the larger RFPs. The RFP includes the school. This site does not have the scale or the economics to provide those things. But yet, the, the uh, park space will be addressed, retail will be addressed, and other issues will be addressed. I, I and there is even the parking requirement. I have a slightly different but consistent explanation, which is uh, we're before the community board. I mean, we're the one that, that they get to comment on and take apart directly. There's nothing else before them. We, you know, we can catch all of their concerns because our application is right in front of them. I think so we, we knew in the community, we set up a, just a meeting on this site, which I think you requested and we were happy to do. I thought we were going to hit with tomatoes. I've been to a lot of community boards at Seaport, as well as a very aggressive one. We had an enormous positive response because I think people said, right, we, we're kind of taking a scapegoat hit for a lot of the other things that are happening. And a lot of people came up and said, wow, I can't believe you actually thought about the level of uh, design that actually takes some considerations. We don't want a 28-story building, but we really uh, were impressed with the level of, of intention that went into it. We've actually, this last slide is, you know, we're, we're going to have the biggest battle at BSA as we move forward. We're waiting on their comments back, which are a little late. And we're going to have to convince Marjorie Pohlmetter and BSA that this is within the neighborhood context and already addressing different uh, height and massing studies to uh, work on that, that final height if necessary. So were I to be the community board, it would be the last thing that they listed that would be more troublesome to me than anything else. Which, point? Which is a negative impact on the new zoning that's coming out. So I, that's what I'm just saying. That's what yeah. I would be thinking, which yeah. is that if we approve a 20, did you say 28 story? Yes. Uh, building, you know, it's higher than most of the things in the area, but it gives almost permission for city planning to go higher. I'm not sure that, I, well, I haven't spoken to them about it this week. You know, technically speaking, a variance is not a precedent for anything. We all know this. Right? It's just that, right. It's but based I, on a hardship. I'm just trying to tell you what I would yeah. If I was the chair of the community board, that's what I would think. But I haven't spoken to If you. I were the chair of the community board, I'd be more concerned mm -hmm. about the RFP than about this project Absolutely. in terms of setting a baseline for future rezoning. Because that, that indicates what, what's coming. That indicates what city planning thinks is appropriate. So, you know, we have a little time. I think there's a good understanding that the paint building, this site is, had this, the level of standard to meet the BSA of the hardship of this site was definitely different than that. How many uh, square feet is the public space, open space? Over 16,000. And right now, it's not anything. Right. Uh, right now it is, uh, no, I, I showed no you a couple pictures. There's no public space. No. There's no so public. you're adding 16,000 square feet of public space. Are you building the park or are they? Are we, are. They? we are. You're building the park and then how are you going to run the park? We're going to maintain it. You're going to maintain it pursuant to a? Uh, there'll be uh, uh, an agreement. Uh, they will have an understanding to be drafted with the Parks Department? Yes, yeah. city planning. 
So you're gonna, but who's, you're gonna end up continuing to own it.